Hi everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the ROG Strix X570e. Now this is a launch day video. So that does mean that I have done a review that's already on the channel of the 3700X and the 3900X. I did uh, overclocking, I did some PCI Express 4 testing with drives. Most importantly though, what I actually did was some X470 versus X570 tests. For those of you out there that may already be on an X470 board and wondering what performance might be like. Now I do have the Strix and this is the first of my standalone reviews, although if you are interested in the Hero, then my CPU review was actually done on the Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard. But the Strix, at the time of filming this, I still not been given an official Asus price. But I do know that the Tough board that comes below this is going to be $234.99. So I'm kind of guessing this is going to be somewhere between $269 and $289. Now the X570 boards do come in that little bit more expensive just because of how expensive it is to properly implement all the PCI Express 4. There's extra switches that have to be added. There are signal amplifiers that have to be added just to get things, you know, all playing ball. If you want to go and have a look at my main review as well, there's um, of the CPUs. There's some interesting stuff there that you can find out about uh, how the CPUs work and other boards as well. But if you're looking for future proofing and you want them, you know, the most up to date tech and technologies, then you're going to need to be on some kind of X570 kind of kit. So that's why we're going to have a look at this one today. Now I'll have a quick look inside the box just for those of you that are interested in the stuff that you get. Now you do get a little bit inside, this is normally where the motherboard would be, but it's there, it's already out. Uh, and you get the uh, antenna for your Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi 6. When you take the secondary layer out inside, because I've already done a preview of this online, so if you want a very up-close look at the what's inside the box and the actual board itself, go and have a look at the uh, preview. So, you get a thermal probe, you get some zip ties, you get four SATA cables, they're normal plastic ones, then you get uh, an RGB extension cable, you get an addressable RGB extension cable, you can tell it's addressable because it's only three pins. Then you will get a door hanger, yes. Screws for the M.2, you'll get uh, a cable mod voucher and you can use that cable mod voucher, it can only be used once. Someone said to me the other day that uh, if you buy individual cables it's only good uh, for 20% off an individual cable. But if you buy a full kit, you still get 20% off a full kit. So there's a little hint. Anyway, more stuff. Stickers. These stickers are actually brilliant to use that for your cables. If you've got a lot of hard drives, you'll get a good use out of these. These go on your fans and stuff. You get your driver CD. To be honest with you, I'll say this. If you um, uh, end up reinstalling your system later on or something, go and download the most latest drivers off the ASUS website, do yourself a favour, uh, and then you get the, your normal manual and all of that sort of stuff. So an up close look at the board, and we will go, I have done more, much more detail in the preview that's on the channel. We're gonna put that in the first page of the written review that's on the OC3D website as well. Um, so if you wanna go into more depth and all of that sort of stuff, and you can have a look. But up here, we have three fan headers, and one of them is for the pump, two of them is for the CPU. You've got a normal four pin RGB there, and then there is a three pin RGB addressable there. Just above that RGB addressable, you can see that you've got the little lights there, which will give you uh, an indica indication to the post process that's going on. If one stays on and the system hangs, it gives you a, you know, a, a hint into where your issue may be lying. When we drop down below the 24 pin, what you get is the USB 3.2 Gen 2 external header. Then this board does have, as I move it back, eight SATAs for those of you that might have a lot of mechanical hard drives or um, uh, solid state drives because you're never going to know. It does have a fan on the chipset, as you can see there. 
One of the things I will say is when I was testing this, we did have a look to see how fast that fan was uh, spinning. And you'll be surprised to hear it was 2,600 RPM. Now, a lot of people are instantly going to be going, oh my God, that's going to make so much noise. But in reality, it doesn't. And even in a quiet room, it wasn't really that audible. I think by the time you've got a graphics card uh, running and uh, a couple of case fans, it's going to be completely drowned out. They've, it's quite surprising how not noisy it was because those fans back in the day would have been obscene, like leaf blower kind of noise. And these just aren't if I'm honest. Maybe if they were spinning at the old school speed of like 4,000, 5,000 RPM, they might have been. But down at this level, they're not. The one thing I will say is I did look for a way in the BIOS to completely disable it, or at least to have a temperature limit for it to then kick in. And I didn't see any of those options available. Uh, this here hides a 110 millimeter long uh, M.2 connector, obviously PCI Express 4. And the one down here is your normal 80 mil long. Down in the bottom corner, when we zoom in, you see a load of these components here. That's for these three fans down in the uh, bottom corner. One of them being a water pump header, which is the one in the middle. They say this one here on the very end is for the M.2 fan. Uh, but to be honest with you, that would be for something uh, the Asus were doing like clip-on things that you could 3D print at one point in time and you could download those. But I would just use this as a normal fan header if I was you. Then you've got more RGB down here, addressable and a normal front panel header connections. When we come across, you can see that you get two USB 2s. You get uh, another USB uh, or you get a USB 3, depending on your uh, the case that you're running. And then just there, you can see with a little grey line around it, that is the Asus node connector. And that is a proprietary Asus connector that they've been trying to get uh, components in to run on. Uh, and I've not had too many things that have needed it that yet, if I'm honest. Uh, with this, you've got your PCI poster. You can then see some gold Japanese capacitors for the Supreme FX audio. And as we come up the board, the one last thing I want to show you is another chassis fan there. When we talk about uh, lighting, this section here and this section here do light up. Uh, can be controlled by the Aura software. You also get the ROG I just above lights up as well. But there is now a really handy thing in the BIOS. So you can go in the BIOS and just turn the lights off. I do wish that in the BIOS you could just set it to, for argument's sake, white, red, blue, green for those of us that didn't want it animated and didn't want to install the software either. So maybe that's something the Asus engineers could sort out because I can't imagine it being that difficult. When we come round the back, we do see a HDMI 2 and a DisplayPort at the top. Although you will need an APU or a CPU with integrated graphics to get those to work. The 3700X and the 3900X do not, or in fact the 3600X and all the way above, do not have integrated graphics at all. So you would need a dedicated graphics card. You can then see just below that the BIOS, and this is the BIOS flashback. Uh, port. You can use it for normal USB if you want, but if uh, you get stuck, you can flash your BIOS through here without even having to have a CPU in. You can literally just power the board and you can do this, hit the button. You do need to make sure that the file inside is named correctly for it to work. I think Asus needs to kind of make that a little bit easier now in that as long as it's a file, the BIOS is obviously going to check to make sure it's the correct file anyway, so I don't think that the name side of it should be too, you know, uh, uh, limiting, really. Uh, then, what we have is, uh, you can see a selection of uh, USBs there. There is a 2.5 gigabit LAN port. Don't forget with the 2.5 gigabit LAN port, you do need support and hardware in the rest of your network. So another rig with 2.5G or a 2.5G switch. Uh, or a 2.5G uh, router, something like that to be able to see that extra throughput. This one here is a gigabit connector and it, for argument's sake, if you were to connect that 2.5 gig to another rig with a one gig, it would only be a one gig transfer, just so that you, one gigabit, sorry, transfer, just so that you can get the idea. Then you can see the audio at the bottom, gold plated connectors, they light up when you're using them as well to make them easy for you to be able to build. 
but then you can see the Wi-Fi 6 and I'm zooming out for a reason because a lot of people have been asking me about Wi-Fi 6 and so far it's only really been the Samsung Galaxy S10 that's had Wi-Fi 6 on it but both of these routers support Wi-Fi 6 so if you are interested in a large upgrade and you're going to upgrade your home network as well both of these do support it and it would mean that you'd be able to get much quicker speeds using Wi-Fi if you're using Wi-Fi for your main rig. Although, to be fair, a lot of us uh, do prefer wired. But it's, you know, if you just haven't got the abilities for that, a decent router is going to get you in a much better place than it would be if you were using one of your normal routers at home. Don't forget, if you have got like a BT router or anything like that, you can still connect one of these into it and run your BT or your uh, whatever network provider that you're using, could be even be in the States or anywhere really, but you can use these as your router and then just use the one that they give you at home just for a modem with a bridging mode. So there's lots of options like that where you can kind of supercharge at home network without having to worry too much uh, about being locked into using the maybe not so good one that your provider gives you. So I know I'm off to one side, but that's because I'm over this way so that we can start putting graphs up on the left-hand side. Now, on the OC3 website, there are a total of 24 graphs with data on that you can look at for the new boards. The uh, crosshair that is in the uh, the crosshair, um, I will get my words out, the crosshair hero. I've spoken far too much in the last couple of days about this stuff and words and numbers are just becoming so difficult to try and get the specifics right. It's not even get, getting funny. But anyway, the hero that's in the graph was the original testing that I did do on the 3900X when I was testing the CPU first but out. So this is kind of the first dedicated board review that I have uh, filmed for YouTube. Now, 11 out of those 24 graphs, this actually did come top. Which when you think about it, it's horribly one of the lower price boards in the pack at the moment. I think it's, it, it has done relatively well because we don't know how much the uh, hero is gonna be I'm kind of guessing it's going to be well over the £300 mark, maybe around the 350 mark. So, you know, things are getting quite expensive. But if you're in the market for one of these, this has proven it does it quite well. Not only did it manage to max the CPU out, and by max the CPU out, I mean we've already found the limit of our CPU, or at least we think we found the limit of the CPU. It's kind of on par with the, the most of the processes that we've seen go out on launch day, and that's 4.4 gigahertz. One of the things I will say though, if you're gonna get a 3900X, it's gonna turbo all cores to itself at um, uh, 4.3 anyway. So when you do end up overclocking it for that extra 100 megahertz, you do then kind of find yourself, like with the old Ryzen days, starting to wonder whether it was really worth it. Uh, you can do a thing now with Precision Boost Overdrive where you can offset the boost by 200 megahertz. Now that doesn't mean that the top end of the boost is upped, it means the lower end of the boost is uh, increased. So when the core clocks down and it's not necessarily doing a great deal of stuff, that will run a little bit higher. And you can do that really easily in the BIOS as well. You can literally just go in there and literally go 50, 100, 100 and 200. So it's a, it's a nice thing that you can do. Um, but performance, as the graphs have been showing, I hope when I do the editing, it has done really well. So, Okay, it's a little bit more money than we've been used to, but that's because of the way AMD wanted the PCR Express 4 added and stuff. So if your argument is about pricing, then sadly you do need to kind of make yourself wonder whether it might have been a better idea in the first place for AMD just to have stayed with PCR Express 3. Um, so I'm not going to go on about that too much after this batch of videos, to be honest with you, but... It did really well, it overclocked really well. We did get it to do uh, 4,400 megahertz on the memory as well. Now, with the uh, 3900X, the most I've managed to get out of it was 4533. This did 44, uh, so 4.4 gigahertz on the memory, stable. We did manage to get it at 4533, but it wasn't 100% stable for something really intensive like Blender. Now, one of the things I will say, and this is a CPU thing, not a board thing, 
but 3600 is a really nice spot to stop with your memory purchases. If you wanna push up, then you get small increases up to about 4,000 megahertz. Up at 4,000 megahertz, it does then pretty much level out where the increases are very, very small and certainly not worth the extra money that you may find yourself having to fork out for those mental speed memory kits, unless you're, you are just looking for an e system or you're one of those guys that may want to, for argument's sake, buy a 4,400 megahertz kit and then run it at 4K and but tune the bejesus out of the cast timings and stuff for a little project. So there are lots of kind of little options and caveats and that sort of thing there with the, the abilities. And it's going to come down to your knowledge at home and literally how click and you know play and how easy you want stuff to be. So for those of you out there with a bit of noggin that want to spend a bit of time with your board, it's not going to disappoint, although it's not going to be like well record friendly for those of you out there that are going to end up pouring uh, liquid gas on it or anything like that. But uh, for the, the average kind of enthusiast user, it's going to keep you more than happy. But to be honest with you, by the time you've popped a 38 or a 3900X in it and your graphics card of choice, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. It's a cracking little board for the money. And it also, one of the things I do need to say is the BIOS uh, that um, was available at launch was actually really strong as well. And it's one of the things I will say that when it does come to BIOS and BIOS support, Asus are stronger than the others in. So it's one of those things that I know that comment alone is going to set off a complete wave of comments in the, uh, in, uh, you know, underneath in the video and probably on the forums and stuff as well. But it, it, it's just one of those things that it does happen, especially as stuff progresses. Uh, and I already know of a few fixes that they're trying to, um, that they're working on that aren't really even like massive issues at the moment either but they do keep striving to keep them uh, up to date and sorted and the, their team is fairly strong as well. But anyway, I digress. Cracking little board, I really like it. If you fancy a better look on the OC3D website, go and have a look at all the graphs and everything that are over there. Also, don't forget that there are a lot more videos on the channel as well, including previews of other boards. All of the pre previews that I've done, I will be trying to get the reviews done over the next couple of weeks. They take a couple of three days to test and make videos and do the uh, written side of things for each one, which is why trying to get all the stuff done for the main launch has been a bit of a nightmare. If this is the first video of mine that you found and you have enjoyed it, then please hit the subscribe button. But also, if you're a regular and you've actually managed to sit to the end, go and get yourself an internet cookie, but have you pressed the bell on the channel because then, YouTube will actually tell you why I've got videos live rather than you having to come and find them. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one bringing you yet more X570 content uh, and it's nice to have AMD back and if you haven't seen the 3970X versus uh, 3970X, if you've not seen the 3900X versus the 3700X which was a uh, X470 versus X570 review, then that's live on the channel and well worth getting yourself comfy for. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one. Out. Ding! Remote's here, look.